Being an audit committee chairman or member or, or non-executive director is, is a very demanding responsibility and things are changing rapidly. Information technology, valuation of assets, uh, currencies, um, the disruption of, of any description, um, as well as your statutory responsibility, etc. Great that, that Nkonki have stepped up to the plate and, and are, are providing not only conferences but also knowledge bases uh, that you can access and uh, how do I keep myself up to speed. I think that's the responsibility of every individual director, every in individual audit committee member and the companies whose boards you serve on, they'll provide you some access to information. That's probably industry specific. Uh, take responsibility for yourself and, and the Nkonki databases are, are definitely a great step in that direction for, for which personally, yeah, Th thank you to, to Cindy, uh, the other partners and, and the team at Nkonki for that. So the ranking of South Africa's uh, listed company governance is, is right up there with the best in the world. Um, and, and I don't think that's a fudged ranking. I think that's something that South Africa has been good at for many years. Um, the King Committee reports, uh, etc. But, but also the caliber of, of our professionals. Uh, the professional non-executive directors uh, from the vast majority of board chairs through to audit committee chairs, audit committee members, the vast majority of people take these responsibilities very seriously. And then the strength of, of our, our uh, financial accounting uh, professions, our external audit uh, profession, and uh, the growing strength of, of internal audit uh, uh, quality in South Africa as well. It's much easier on a listed company, or let me go as far as saying in the private sector, because you know where the buck stops. The buck stops with the board. The board is responsible, the board is accountable, there's no other authority. Sure, the shareholders can get together in general meeting and replace the board. Well, well, that doesn't happen very often, but the board is in charge. It's the ultimate authority, there's no debate about that. The CEO, the CFO, they're part of the board, They've got, they operate under delegated authority, uh, authority of the board. So responsibility for your value system, your ethics, your behavior in the organization, your reputation, your brand, and the audit committee is a subset of that process. There was a suggestion a couple of years ago that the audit committee should be some separate structure outside of the board. That, that was a stupid idea. Um, some very clever people supported the idea. It's a stupid idea. The strength of the audit committee is you're part of the board. You have separate statutory responsibilities, but you have the ability to get something done. That's the big difference, I think, between the easier place to be on an audit committee, the private sector, or the listed companies, uh, than in an environment where you don't really n ever know where the buck stops. The new external audit report, uh, yeah, I think that's fine. If for us, we need to be very careful. I think we've become too American in our approach. We're too rules-based. Um, and it saddens me, uh, chairing one listed company's board and, and the audit committees of four other listed companies, saddens me that the most frequent question I get from shareholders is, tell us the real numbers. We've seen the IFRS numbers, but tell us the actual underlying sustainable uh, numbers because we don't understand these, these numbers. Um, and and uh, if IFRS works for the select uh, few of us in the profession who understand it, but doesn't work for everybody else, we've lost the plot. Um, and I think we're very close to that. Um, if, if that's the question that keeps getting asked, what are the real sustainable underlying numbers, we're going to have to go back and look at our formula. Um, and I think maybe we've overcooked uh, IFRS now.